according to Luke. Glory to you. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus addressed this parable to them. What man among you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning, Father. Once I, uh, I, spoke, I spoke with somebody and I mentioned about for a thousand years, the, the Catholic Church depended on the writing of uh, this one man and uh, a lot of people do not know where he comes from. And this man comes from Africa. And I asked him, do you know a man by the name of uh, Augustine of Pitbull? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know him? Yeah. And uh, you know that he's uh, an African? Mm -hmm. And he's black? Mm -hmm. The whole church for, you know, like uh, since the, the, uh, the 4th, 5th century and to the 15th century, depended on his writing. Until St. Thomas Aquinas came along, took his rule, took his writing, and then elaborate, make it clearer. That was a thousand years. And we still depend on him, and Martin Luther, you know, was an Augustinian monk. And people are not aware that he is a black African. Now, there's another man, also, who was born to a, na a native American, South American, also a black slave, but you know, his mother was free, and his father was a Spaniard, but because he was a, a, an uh, illegitimate uh, son, so people rejected him. He was free, he was not a slave, okay? But still, he was black. And he, he loved the Lord, he loved to serve the people, the poor, and then he, requested that uh, he could join this Dominican's order, okay? And you know the Dominican, Dominican's order, they, you know, we, I have a lot of teachers, professors who have Dominicans in Rome, and here as well. And uh, they took the rule of St. Augustine. They live by the rule of St. Augustine. They, they do not take the vows of, uh, the vow of uh, chastity or the vows of poverty. <coughs> Only one vow, obedience. But obedience encompasses chastity and poverty. So this young man, who was 14 years old, he went to this monastery, a friary, and requested if he could uh, join the order. But then during that time, you know, there's a there's a law forbidding anyone of the uh, you know of, of color to join the religious order. If you're a Native American, an Indians, or black, you cannot join. So what did he, he do? 14 years old boy, he said, okay, well, you do not allow me to join, so I will volunteer to be, just be a volunteer. I do menial task for the order. And so the superior, the, you know, uh, they allowed him just to do menial task, just uh, like a slave. 
and he did it all like for 10 years and then, and then the uh, the prior of the monastery and he you know he said oh, I'm gonna you know I will have an exception I accept you into the order to be a third order uh, Dominican he wore the habits of the Dominicans but he was not a full-fledged and religious but then the, the conference of fires in the monastery you know, they they start calling him names and everything else, you know, they was very discriminating against him. Doesn't matter to him. Now, what he did was he was a, you know, he did uh, haircuts and he was a nurse, so he helped out people. And people, all the poor people gather around him and he requested, imagine, you know, we have a beautiful church here, okay, and you have this, uh, people rejected, you know, this black Indian Know, a legitimate, a legitimate uh, um, young man, and he asked the, the superior, say, oh, if I could just meet the people at the corner of the street at one of the oak tree there, and they come, the sick people, the poor people, I'm going to feed them, the sick people, I'm going to heal them. Imagine he created a whole hospital at one of those oak trees <laughs> in the monastery, you know, then he got into a lot of trouble. He still do it. He did it. And then uh, one time, this, this happens in Peru, Lima, okay? And there was a kind of a, a black or something. People got sick, a lot of people got sick, including the superiors, including many of the leaders in the, the monastery. And, and so uh, the superiors just lock all these people inside the house and forbid everybody to enter and meet with them or touch them. But Martin, Horace, what did he do? Oh, he, uh, he's... Uh, has this gift, not just of my location, he can go walk through wall. So he went through the wall because the door is locked. Right? So he walked through the wall, he took care of those people inside. <laughs> and he got out and the superior said, you know, you are forbidden to enter into this place. And he said, Father, I am so sorry. I, I apologize. I did not know that obedience takes precedence over charity. Which one is more important, charity or obedience? Charity. So the spirit said, okay, do whatever. He caused a lot of trouble. Oh <laughs> Martin, of course. This is the spirit. He was not, okay, later on he became a religious, religious Dominican, but he was not a priest. He is the image of the shepherd, the image of God. And God purposely chose the image of a shepherd. The shepherd, what does a shepherd do? He's not just a king, you know, staying in the palace like Herod, or our president in the palace, you know, in the White House. No, the shepherd, the, our king goes out, go after, he goes after the sinners, the sick, the poor. He goes after the lepers. You are diseased, you are sick, doesn't matter. He embraces. This is the image of our God. And it tells us about one reality. It is so easy to enter into heaven, much easier than going to hell. You know that? Much easier. Because heaven, the king of heaven is going after us. Now, for the Pharisees and the scribes, they, they have the law, they have the rule. They said the rule, the rule is this. Those sinners, they call them the people of the land. Okay, the people of the land. And the people of land, you do not get in contact with them. You don't do business with them. You never have dinner with them. You never eat with them. Share the same meals at the same table. Jesus did that. He stayed with the people of the land. And he said, now listen to this parable. God is like a good shepherd. The good shepherd. What does a good shepherd do? Oh, he went after the sheep. Now, the sheep can be lost, you know, I have preached about the sheep already, but the shepherd, the role of the shepherd is, is if the sheep is lost, he's going to go, you know, the, the, the flock belongs to many shepherds. So one shepherd will go and search for, seek for this lost sheep, and there will be hyenas and wolves and lions, and the terrain, you, you go to, you know, Palestine, you go to Israel, you see, it is not easy. He could lose his life. He went after this last one lost sheep. And if the, the sheep is dead, he has to get the skin of the sheep back and then tell the people where, where it was, and, and, uh, when it was uh, eaten. 
So the role of God as a deceptive shepherd is that way. He, once he found the sheep, he put it on his shoulders and and went, you know, walk on the way with great joy. And he, he goes home, he calls everybody, rejoice, rejoice. Because I have my lost sheep, only one. Now who are the lost sheep? If you follow the Pharisees and the scribes, they say, sinners, you obliterate them out of existence. That's it. But for God, for the Good Shepherd, no. The, the sinners are the lost sheep. And if they repent, the whole, all the angels, everybody rejoice. We should celebrate because that sinner has repented. So, we know we are all sinners. And we have the way to enter into heaven. That way is Jesus Christ. God is going after us. The King of Heaven, the King of the Kingdom of Heaven is going after us. We think that we are going after God. No, God is going after us. And this is the reason for us to rejoice. And we rejoice with St. Martin the Forest because he is really the presence of God when he was alive and still now his example and his prayers. <coughs> let us pray so we could be like the Good Shepherd and let us rejoice because we are those lost sheep, the sinners, and we repented. And we know that in heaven, the angels and all the saints are rejoicing with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.